Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is the Panasonic Lumix S 20 to 60 mm f 3.5 to 5.6, a general purpose zoom for the full frame L mount system, which means it works on L mount bodies from Panasonic, Sigma, and Leica. Announced in May 2020, it's one of the smallest, lightest, and at $599 or about £620, one of the most affordable lenses to date in the L mount system, while also delivering a fairly unique focal range that starts wider than most standard zooms. I have it mounted here on the fairly hefty Lumix S1H for testing, although its size and price point implies to me that a smaller L mount body from, say, Panasonic may be on the way. Here's the Lumix S 24-105 f4 on the left, joined by the Lumix S 20-60 on the right, and the difference in size is clear. The 24-105 on the left is 118mm long and 84mm in diameter compared to the 87mm length and 77mm diameter for the 20-60 on the right. That makes the 20-60 comfortably smaller while also supporting narrower 67mm filters versus 77mm filters on the 24-105. In your hands, the 2060 is a lot lighter too. At 350 grams, it's almost half the weight of the 24 to 105, and you really notice the difference when carrying them around for any length of time. The barrel of the 2060 is pretty simple with only a single switch to enable autofocus. There's no optical stabilization here. Zooming the lens from 20 to 60 extends the barrel, while at the end is a motor assisted manual focusing ring. I fitted the supplied petal lens hood here. And for comparison, here's the 24-105 f4, again fitted with its supplied hood, and it's clearly a longer lens even when retracted. Unlike the 20-60, the 24-105 features optical stabilisation, which can be enabled with a switch on the barrel, and in addition to the AF switch, there's also a lock to keep the barrel at 24mm. The barrel extends as you zoom from 24-105, and there's a slightly wider manual focusing ring, again motor-assisted like most mirrorless lenses. Despite its lower price, Panasonic has gratifyingly made the 20-60mm dust and splash resistant, including a rubber seal at the lens mount and a fluorine coating on the front element. In terms of optics, the 2060 employs 11 elements in 9 groups, including 2 aspherical elements. The closest focusing distance is an impressive 15cm at the wide end or 40cm at the long end, delivering a maximum magnification of 0.3 times for some nice macro results I'll show you in a moment. There's 9 diaphragm blades, a variable aperture of f3.5 to 5.6, but again no optical stabilisation, so to iron out any wobbles you'll need a body with sensor shift stabilisation. Luckily that includes all three of Panasonic's Lumix S bodies at the time I filmed this video. As for focusing, it was swift and quiet in my tests, roughly matching the Lumix S24-105, and like that model, pretty much dependent on the body you mount it on. Ok, so here's the range of the 20-60 to in practice, with a wider than average starting point ideal for architecture, landscapes or just cramped interiors. It may not zoom as far as more traditional standard zooms at the long end, but I'd happily trade that for the wider opportunities. It's a fairly unique range, and reminiscent of Panasonic's earlier 10-25 micro four thirds lens, with its 20-50mm to equivalent coverage. The Lumix S 20-60 keeps costs down with a variable aperture of f3.5 to 5.6, but while it lacks the constant focal ratios of the Lumix S 24-105 f4 or the 24-72.8, you can still achieve some nice blurring effects. Indeed, at 20mm f3.5, it actually essentially matches the coverage and depth of field of the Lumix G 10-25 at 10mm f1.7. Here's how the lens looks for bokeh blobs at 60mm f5.6 when the subject is near to the closest focusing distance. And for comparison, here's the 24-105 at 60mm f4 where the extra stop of aperture inevitably delivers slightly larger blobs and a little more blurring, but I'd say the 20-60 is still delivering good results here and I'll show you some more close-ups in just a moment. My standard outdoor test scene was off limits at the time I made this video, so I've gone for a trusty brick wall to have a quick look at the sharpness in the corners. First here's the lens at 20mm f3.5, and when you look closely in the corners, there's inevitably a little softening, but it's not too bad. This equally applies to when I was photographing landscapes with foliage in the corners. Next here's the lens at 60mm f5.6, and again when you zoom into the corners for a closer look, there's some reduction in sharpness, but again, it's pretty acceptable. So while it's not the sharpest tool in the box when the aperture is wide open, it's not that bad and if you can close the aperture by even one stop you'll enjoy a boost in corner sharpness. Now for a selection of images I shot with the Lumix S 20-60mm mounted on an S1H body. All a JPEG straight out of camera with no modifications. The most unique thing about this lens is of course the range and I really enjoyed having a general purpose zoom with wider than average coverage at the short end. 
As a wide angle fan, I often assume I need an ultra wide angle zoom, but I found the 20 to 60 range much more practical than say a 16 to 35, and that it also prevented me from the temptation of shooting too wide. Meanwhile, at the longer end, it may lack the reach of more typical ranges, but 60mm is enough for details or group portraits. The minimum focusing distance is also a bonus, letting you get decent close-ups, and as a walk-around lens, I much preferred the compact size and weight to the 24-105 or 24-70mm options from Panasonic. The 20-60mm range is also perfect for video use, and here's a bunch of clips I filmed with the lens mounted on the S1H in 4K. It's nice to easily grab wide establishing shots before zooming into details, and again the close focusing will give you the potential for fine details. The lens may not feature optical stabilisation of its own, but delivered wobble free footage when mounted on bodies with sensor stabilisation, like the S1H here. The wide end is also ideal for vlogging, as I'll now show you in this next clip. Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is a quick vlogging test with the Lumix S 20 to 60 millimeter, which is actually a really cool lens for filming, especially at that wider than average short end of 20 mil, which is what I'm at now. And I have the aperture wide open to f 3.5, which is actually a fraction brighter and of course notably wider than the 24 to 105 millimeter f 4. And better than that, for this kind of work, it's also the smallest, lightest, and most affordable lens in the Lumix S system so far. In fact, it's half the price, $599. That's half the price, roughly, of the 24 to 105. And the lighter weight has made it much easier for me to hold it here. I'm filming this in 4K at 25p with the S1H, which is not the world's lightest camera. So I'm quite glad to have a lens that's reasonably light. Now this lens does not have optical stabilization. So I'm currently using body based stabilization only to iron out the wobbles. So keep an eye on those trees at either side of me because there could be a little bit of warping with the stabilization. To be fair, that does happen with a lot of other camera systems. Okay, I've switched to the Lumix S24 to 105 millimeter, which is a constant f4 aperture lens. So this is filming at f4. Now it's nice to have that constant aperture at the long end, but at the wide end, it's not doing me any favors over the 20 to 60. In fact, it's a fraction dimmer, but you'll also notice the difference in the field of view between 20 mil on the previous lens and 24 mil here. I'm holding it out at arm's length. So you can see it is a tighter field of view. But perhaps for this kind of work, more importantly, this lens is a lot bigger. It's a lot heavier and mounted on the S1H, which again, is not a light camera to start with. This is really far too heavy a combination to film handheld like this for any length of time. Still that mercifully cuts this vlogging section to a close. So I hope you found it useful. And now on with the rest of the review. The Lumix S 20 to 60 millimeter is a very welcome addition to the growing collection of L-mount lenses. The range allows you to use it as a general purpose zoom, but with wider than average coverage at the short end, making it perfect for landscape and architecture, but also ideal for video and vlogging. Sure, it misses out on the longer reach of more traditional general zooms, but if your bias is towards the wider end, you'll love the flexibility. As a more affordable option, it's inevitably not pin sharp in the corners at the widest apertures, but close it down a stop or two and it crisps up nicely. The close focusing is also a nice bonus. Perhaps most compelling of all though is the size, weight and price, as the 20-60mm to becomes one of the most compact and affordable lenses in the L-mount system to date, weighing and costing roughly half that of the 24-105mm to f4. This not only makes it ideal for travel, but suggests cheaper, more compact L-mount bodies may be in the pipeline with this as the kit zoom. Whatever body you mount it on though, the Lumix S 20-60mm brings a touch of the exotic without breaking the bank and it comes recommended. It's certainly become my favourite general purpose zoom for the system. Right, that's it for another review. Let me know what you think of the lens in the comments and how you feel about the L-mount system in general. Don't forget to like and subscribe and if you really found my review useful, you can support me with a coffee or by treating yourself to my in-camera book or some Camera Labs merch. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.